because our whole methodology in measuring who's got diabetes and who doesn't have diabetes is totally flawed. And today I'm going to expose that to you, to tell you that when we go to our regular doctors and everywhere else, they're not telling you the truth. Not because they don't want it, it's because they don't know themselves. There's no difference between pre-diabetes and diabetes, and I'm going to show you that today. So pre-diabetes, so since we talk about let me just talk about that. Pre-diabetes is when your insulin levels are running so high, but your sugars are still okay. Because it's just taking a whole lot of insulin to keep your sugars under control. Now, the day that your sugar goes out of control, you say, oh, your sugars are high now. Because the insulin can't keep it down. You say, oh, you're a diabetic now. And when the patient becomes a diabetic, then you do the angiograms, the CT scans, and you do the work. And say, oh, my God, all your arteries are clogged up. And, you know, but it didn't happen overnight. You earned it. It took you 20 years to do it, 15 years to do it. That's what made you what you are. It takes 10 to, now this should scare all of you, and I hope that you take this home. It takes 10 to 15 years of prehypertension to develop, I mean pre-diabetes, to develop diabetes. That means the process actually starts in your 30s and 40s when the bad lifestyle and the sugar intake and the frequency of eating causes hyperinsulinemia. So you have high insulin. So now when I eat a meal, instead of making this much insulin, I have to have this much insulin. And as the years go by, I make more and more and more insulin. Why am I making more insulin? Because I'm becoming resistant to insulin. Why am I becoming resistant to insulin? Because it's a hormone. So what? Well, a hormone has to be cyclical. How do, how, how do women not ovulate? when you give them the birth control pill. Because it's supposed to have periodic variations in the hormonal levels, but when you have a constant level of the hormone, the body doesn't respond to it, so you don't ovulate anymore, right? That's how birth control works. Now we think that we can have constantly elevated insulin levels because we're eating every two, three hours, and we're eating processed foods and refined foods, and then you expect the body to respond with insulin? Well, you'll make insulin, but your body will not respond to it. So what happens as the years go by, you start having to make a gallon of insulin at each meal. So then the question really you should be asking me is that then dark, but the sugar is under good control. So what's wrong with that? Well, you missed the boat. All of us missed the boat. The doctors missed the boat. It's not the sugar that's hurting you so much. 20% of the, the bad stuff in your, in your heart and your arteries and your body and your brain and your kidneys is because of the high sugar but 80% because of the high insulin. So what happens is that it's the hyperinsulinemia that's hurting your arteries, that's paralyzing your arteries, causing calcification of your arteries, causing hardening of your arteries, so that by the time you become a diabetic, it's too late. So why am I hopping on all this? Because most Indians are either pre-diabetic or diabetic, and they just don't know it. Because they feel good. You can't measure your sugar levels, and you can't feel it. You can only measure it. You can't feel my sugar level. Oh, yeah, my sugar is good today. No, you just don't know that. So you have to get it measured. So now it says here that non-diabetic risk is 11% in India because many already have pre-diabetes, hyperinsulin. They just don't know it. They never measured it. So I'm saying to you that this is really one disease, pre-diabetes and diabetes. It's just a question of where you're going to draw the line. So you're going to say, oh, I'm going to call you a diabetic when your sugar levels are now at 100. So what, at 98 I'm not? <laughs> Do you see the fallacy in this thinking? But this is how medicine has been. And this is the biggest downfall of medicine. That's why we do such a lousy job in prevention. Because we try to just categorize everything. This is a biological, human being is a biological machine. This is not a machine as such. It's biology in action. So you got to... Look at it differently. You can't say, oh, the cutoff is at 100. So let me ask you, how did they decide that diabetes is when your random blood sugar is greater than 126? How did they decide that? Why not 127? Why not 125? It's because what they did is said, all these people here have high sugars. So now let's see if you all had high sugars over 100. When shall we call it diabetes? So they went and looked in everyone's eyes, and they found that when they had retinopathy, Oh, he's got, he must have diabetes because he's got hardening of the arteries. You can see it in the eye. And those people had a blood sugar greater than 126. 
So inherent in the diagnosis of diabetes at 126, you already have the disease. You already have hardening of the arteries. So it's not like you want to know whether you got diabetes or not to find out whether you have hardening of the arteries. No, you already have it at 126. So that's why redefining diabetes is the biggest thing, we have, biggest challenge we have today is diabetes. It is the epidemic in the world. This is the pandemic. This is the real pandemic. Sugar. Sugar is the pandemic. And this is the reason why the entire Indian subcontinent is going to suffer and why America is going to suffer too. This is the reason why healthcare is going to be non-sustainable. It's because of, of pre-diabetes and diabetes. Right now, if you look at the definition of metabolic syndrome, which is pre-diabetes, by that definition, more than 80% of the U.S. population has either diabetes or pre-diabetes. 80%! They just don't know it.